Hi judges, welcome to another segment of One Arliwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. And for today's video lesson, we will try to derive the different trigonometric identities given as fundamental identities, reciprocal identities, quotient identities, and Pythagorean identities. So, in this lesson, we will be able to derive those identities using a unit circle. Okay? Why? Because we will be using these trigonometric identities in order for us to prove if it is really an identity. Last time, we were able to discuss whether an equation is a conditional equation or an identity. Today, we will be able to name the different trigonometric identities using a unit circle. So this is our unit circle. And always remember that the radius of a unit circle is always equal to 1. So if I will be having a right triangle here, and I will draw a line there, therefore, based from this triangle, let's say this is side A, this is side B, and this is our angle theta. Okay, so I'll be getting the triangle. So this is our triangle, this is our theta, this is the radius which is equal to 1, and we will also be calling this as the hypotenuse. This is our angle B, this is our angle A. Okay, so from this triangle, let us define our SOKATOA. We're in where we say so, that is sine theta. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The reciprocal of sine would be cosecant theta. Therefore, cosecant theta is hypotenuse over the opposite side. For ka, we have cosine. Therefore, we have cosine theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Reciprocal of cosine is secant theta. Therefore, that is hypotenuse over adjacent. And for the last one, we have tangent. So tangent theta, which is toa, that is opposite over adjacent. And cotangent theta, which is the reciprocal of tangent, would be adjacent over opposite. Okay, so from this triangle, let us now have the values of this one. Okay, so let's start with the six fundamental identities. Okay, so we have fundamental identities. The given would be sine theta. We also have cosecant theta. We have cosine theta. We have secant theta. We have tangent theta. And we also have cotangent theta. Okay. Since we know sine theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, look at this triangle. Opposite side is A. And hypotenuse, which is the radius, is equal to 1. Therefore, we could say that from this one, sine theta is equal to A. Therefore, we could say that cosecant theta is 1 over A. Where in A is equal to sine theta. Okay? We have now cosine theta. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side here is B. Therefore, we could say that that is B over hypotenuse, which is 1. Therefore, we could say that cosine theta is equal to B. Secant theta now is hypotenuse over adjacent or 1 over B. Or we could say that secant theta is 1 
over what is the value of b? Cosine theta. And for tangent theta, that is given as opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is a, wherein the adjacent side is b. But what is a and what is b? Okay, therefore we could say that a is sine theta, therefore this is sine theta, and our b is cosine theta. Therefore, we could say that tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. And for cotangent, that is just the reciprocal. We could say that that is b over a, and that is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. So these are the fundamental identities, and from this fundamental identities, we will be able to find out we will be able to find out the reciprocal identities. Okay? Let's now have the reciprocal identities. Okay? For the reciprocal identities, we could say that sine theta is equal to 1 over cosecant theta. Or we could say that cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. For the next one, we are given cosine theta that is equal to 1 over secant theta. If we have here secant theta, just cross multiply or interchange. Therefore, it is equal to 1 over very good. That is cosine theta. For the next one, we are given tangent theta. Therefore, we could say that tangent theta is equal to 1 over cotangent theta. And we will be able to find out that cotangent theta is just the reciprocal and that is 1 over tangent theta. So these are reciprocal identities. Let's now find out the next part which is the quotient identity for the quotient identity we have to when we say quotient we are dealing with fractions because it deals with division so for this one we have tangent theta we're in tangent theta is equal to a over b which is sine theta over cosine theta we also have cotangent theta where in cotangent theta is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. So that is for fundamental reciprocal and quotient identities. Again, for fundamental identities, we have sine theta, cosecant theta, cosine theta, secant theta, tangent theta, and cotangent theta. For reciprocal identity, we have sine theta is equal to 1 over cosecant theta. For cosecant theta, we have 1 over sine theta. For cosine theta, we have 1 over secant theta. And for secant theta, we have 1 over cosine theta. For tangent theta, we have here 1 over cotangent theta. And for cotangent theta, we have 1 over tangent theta. For quotient identity, we have 2, the tangent theta, which is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Remember that always. The tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. And we have cotangent theta, which is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. Okay, and for the last one, we are given, for the last one, we are given Pythagorean identities. Okay. So how do we derive this Pythagorean identities? How do we derive this one? Let us try to get again the triangle. Okay? From the triangle, this is A, this is B, this is the angle theta, this is the hypotenuse which is equal to 1. Okay? Using Pythagorean theorem, we could say that A squared plus B squared is equal to c squared. Wherein, we are given a squared plus b squared. And what is our c squared? 
That is the hypotenuse. And what is the value of the hypotenuse? Very good, that is 1. Therefore, this is 1 squared. And we will be having a squared plus b squared, which is equal to 1. But what do we know about A and what do we know about B? Based on this given fundamental identities, we can still find out the values of A and B. Sine theta is equal to A and cosine theta is equal to B. Substituting that into our equation, therefore, we will be having what is our A? That is sine theta quantity squared. What is our B? Our B is cosine theta, therefore, that is cosine theta squared is equal to 1. If we are squaring a function and it contains an angle, this square will be for the function and not the angle. Therefore, we could say that this is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And this is our first Pythagorean identity. Okay, if we will be trying to manipulate this equation, we could also say that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. Okay? We transform this equation. We move this cosine squared from the left. Move it to the right. Therefore, it becomes negative. And we could also say that cosine squared theta is equal to what? Exactly. That is 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay. So this is the first Pythagorean, let's say that is P1, first Pythagorean identity. How do we get the second Pythagorean identity? For the second Pythagorean identity, let us get first the first Pythagorean identity. Write it down. We have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Divide all the terms by the first one, which is sine squared theta over sine squared theta over sine squared theta. Sine squared theta over sine squared theta? Yes, that is 1. Plus, cosine squared over sine squared? Very good. Cosine over sine is a quotient identity, and that becomes cotangent. But since it is being squared, therefore, that is cotangent squared theta. Is this clear? Is now equal to 1 over sine squared theta. Remember that if you are given a fraction and the numerator is 1, it is a reciprocal identity. And what is 1 over sine? 1 over sine is cosecant. Therefore, this becomes cosecant squared theta. And this is the second Pythagorean identity. And if we will be manipulating this one, we could say that cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta minus 1. And also, we could say that manipulating this one, we could say that this becomes cotangent squared theta minus cosecant squared theta is equal to 1. Okay? So, that is how we get the other Pythagorean identities if we manipulate 1, okay? So, we just transpose that. So, for this one, 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Therefore, in order for us to get the value of the cotangent squared, we just transfer this one to the other side. It becomes negative 1. And we have cotangent squared theta minus cosecant squared theta. So, that is equal to negative 1, okay? Or, this is equal to negative 1. Or we could say that from this one, if we will be transferring this out, we could say that 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta, cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta, okay? So, this is negative 1. This must be negative 1. Since we transfer this out to the other side, this is positive 1, it becomes negative 1. Therefore, we'll now be having cotangent squared theta minus cosecant squared theta is equal to negative 1. <clears throat> okay? And for the last one, so for Pythagorean identity number 3, write again the first Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta 
is equal to 1. Okay, so we need to divide all the terms by the second term, which is cosine squared theta. So this is cosine squared theta, cosine squared theta, 1 over cosine squared theta. And from this one, we'll now be able to find out P3. And that is sine over cosine, quotient. Since it is being squared, therefore, we could say that that is tangent squared theta. Plus, cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta, we cancel that out, and that is equal to 1. 1 over cosine squared theta, again, it is 1 over a function, therefore, it is a reciprocal. 1 over cosine squared theta will give us an answer of secant squared theta. And that is the Pythagorean identity number 3. Okay, so if we will be having this one, we could say that, so from this one, we could say that tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. And also, we will be able to find out that, okay, we will be able to find out that secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta is equal to 1, okay? So, these are the different trigonometric identities from fundamental identities to reciprocal identities to quotient identities to Pythagorean identities. Remember that it is very easy to derive these identities. All you have to do is to remember the unit circle that there are sides, that there will be a triangle from the unit circle, and that triangle will be used in order for us to derive this trigonometric identities. Again, so we have fundamental identities, reciprocal identities, quotient identities, and Pythagorean identities. Once again, I am Engineer Jod Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.